Hi, this is Chef John, here to walk you through a tutorial on food costing using the Excel spreadsheet. Before we begin, remember that if you have questions about formulas we're using or some of the basic functions of Excel, you can go down to this tab, red tab marked Excel Guide, and you will see some of those basic formulas there. Also, be sure to check out the introductory video on using Excel that's up on the Blackboard site. So today we're going to be doing a food cost using this green tab that says food costing on it. Before we begin though, what I want to do is walk through a little bit of the basics about the inventory sheet which is this orange tab marked inventory and there are a few things here that you should know because what you're going to be doing is linking prices from the inventory into that food costing sheet so some basics to begin with is how things are listed and categorized here Items are listed alphabetically, but in some cases they might be grouped according to a certain category. If we take, for example, oranges and lemons, which are citrus fruit, you will see that they're under the citrus category. So lemons, limes, oranges, grapefruit, and so on. The same with fresh herbs, you'll see them all grouped together. So rather than them being listed separately under, you know, B for basil or something like that, they're all under herbs and they're listed as such. Now, if you're talking about dried spices, you will find that under S for spices. So going down farther, you will see all the spice uh, uh, spice items listed there. So again, if you can't find it individually, alphabetically, you will find it in a category. Uh, meats are kind of broken up into the different categories, whether it's beef, pork, or lamb. Fish is listed under one category. Seafood, so things like shrimp and lobster and that are listed under the seafood category. So Again, you have to um, think about that too. If you can't find it in one place, you might in another. Now, one important tool you'll find on this upper tab here is find and select. So you can also search this way by going to find and typing in. Um, I have fish stock here. Um, and if I do that, you'll see that it's right there. Which leads me to um, another important pointer. And there are some ingredients that are house-made that are listed here. So fish stock, a brown stock, a chicken stock, things like that. We've costed those out and dropped that in here. Most of them are under the category of housemaid. But again, if you can't find it, go up to this find and select and you'll be able to search it that way. And the off chance there isn't a price for something, uh, you can email me and we can I can provide you with that price. Okay. Now, when we're looking at prices, you will see them broken out in a couple of ways. So for example, if we take apples here, as apples may be listed by the pound or they may be listed by the piece. Now, uh, depending on what you need, you can use either cost. Uh, it really depends on the circumstance and the recipe. The other thing you should be aware of is that we've broken things out further for example, if you take um, these apples by the pound, so the empire apples are by the pound, 
if you go down here to the extended factor, you'll see um, a price broken down by the ounce. And it depends on what you need, what the recipe calls for. So you can draw on those prices, those price extensions. Um, so they're extended out a little bit here, but then they're also, again, depending on what the ingredient is, maybe extended out further. One other thing to be aware of is the yield factor. So in your recipes, you'll be factoring in yield, which is important because you'll notice, for example, in this case, apples have a 40% yield. So that's important when you're costing out that you factor that in. So you're going to be linking these percentages to your food cost as well. To begin the food cost exercise, you'll want to make a copy of this food cost sheet. Go to the green tab located on the bottom, right click on that and click on move or copy. And then on that window that pops up, click on create a copy, click OK. You'll see that a copy is made. We're going to rename that. We're going to call that our Bordelais food cost. And then we're going to move that over next to the inventory. The reason we're moving that sheet over is so that it's easier to toggle between the inventory and the food cost sheet as we're linking prices and yield and so on. Now that we've moved that over, we're going to go up and enter some basic information here. First of all, the name of the recipe we're Costing, which is Bordelais sauce. We're entering today's date. We're going to enter our recipe yield. The recipe yields one quart, but I'm going to express that as ounces. And our portion size, we're going to use a two ounce portion. So by entering these two quantities, uh, the number of portions can then be calculated using a formula. So in this cell, I'm going to enter equals. I'm going to click on that 32 ounces, enter backslash for division, click on my portion size and hit return. And you'll see our number of portions is now listed. Remember when you're working with Excel to always keep letters and numbers separate. And the reason is when you're creating formulas, Excel does not recognize those letters. So it'll come up as an error if you include ounces in the same cell as your numbers. Now we're going to begin to enter our ingredients and quantities. Our first ingredient is going to be shallots and our quantity is two ounces so remember keep those quantities and units of measure separate the next item is red wine i'm going to express that in ounces as well i need eight ounces of that i need brown sauce and that will be 32 ounces and then some butter and I need two ounces of butter. Lastly, I need some salt and pepper, fresh thyme, and a bay leaf. Now, I'm going to group that together because it's easier and simpler to calculate out, and I'll explain that in a minute. Starting with the shallots, I need to find my AP inventory price. So in that cell, I'm going to highlight it, enter equals and then go down to the inventory tab there and click on that and look up shallots now I can go up here to find and search and enter shallots and it pops up there 
I'm going to use the second shallot there. It's six dollars a pound, but remember we've expressed our quantity in ounces, so the easiest thing to do is to find the ounce price for it, and if you follow this through, you'll see right here, there is a price of 38 cents an ounce, so I'm going to highlight that cell and hit return or enter, and you'll see it drops it in there. Again, I'm going to enter my unit of measure, which is eight ounces. Now we're coming down to the yield percentage, and we're linking that from the inventory as well. So in this cell, I'm hitting equals, I'm going back to the inventory, and I'm looking up the yield percentage, and that's in this yellow column here, and you can see right there on that line, 89% yield, so it's dropping in the yield there. Now I'm going to do the same for the red wine. I'm going to find my inventory price and link it. So I'm in this cell, I'm entering equals. I'm going back to the inventory. Wine is listed alphabetically, so it's going to be towards the bottom of the inventory list. These first few wines you see here are white wines, but this Malbec is a red wine. So I'm gonna grab that cost. It's $11 a bottle, but again, if I look further down here, I can see my ounce price, and it's 44 cents, so I'm gonna highlight that and hit enter, and it drops it in. Now I'm going to go back to my yield percentage, enter equals, go back to the inventory, click on that yield. It is 100%. Um, there's a reason I'm doing this, because you can actually take this spreadsheet and use it as a template with these formulas in it if you wanted to. So if I do this system, it's going to automatically link things and it's going to be able to calculate formulas and it's kind of nice that way. Let's do the same for the brown sauce. I'm going to enter equals into that AP inventory price cell. Go back to the inventory. Now for the brown sauce, I'm going to enter sauce under find and there it is first one that came up there again it's listed as a gallon price as the quart price over here is the ounce price so I'm going to highlight that and hit enter put in my unit of measure link my inventory percentage which is a hundred percent again I'll do the same for the butter, link the inventory price. This is going to be towards the top of the inventory. And you'll see there's a couple of different options for butter. Here's one for $2.99 a pound. I'm going to go down and grab that ounce price and drop it in. And I'm going to do the same with my yield percentage. I'm going to link it. So it drops it right in there. For the salt, pepper, herbs, and spices, because it's kind of hard to calculate minute amounts, I drop in a basic set cost. And so I'm going to just enter one there. And my cost for this recipe, anytime I have salt, pepper with some herbs and spices, I use 25 cents. My yield is going to be 100% on that, so I've entered that as well. Now that we've entered our ingredients, our quantities, we've linked our inventory price, and we've also linked our ingredient yield, we're going to begin entering some formulas to calculate our costs. To start with, we're going to begin by calculating our EP price, and the formula is listed there. So in that first cell for the shallots, I'm entering equals. I'm clicking on my inventory price and I'm going to divide. So I enter backslash and then click on that yield percentage and then hit enter. And you'll see now it's calculated the price based on that yield. It's now 42 cents rather than 38 cents. So I'm going to enter my unit measure and then I can go across here and 
calculate my recipe cost for that ingredient. And again, the formula for this is right there. We're taking our ingredient quantity, which is two ounces, and we're going to multiply it, so we're using an asterisk, times the EP price. And if you hit enter, it now has calculated it out for two ounces of shallots at 42 cents, we've come up with 84 cents. Once you have that first formula, you can then do some shortcuts that are gonna drop that formula into the remaining lines of your ingredients. So if I click on this EP price for the shallots, highlight it, you'll see that little box in the lower right column. I'm gonna hold that my mouse down and grab that and pull it down and now it's automatically entered these formulas for each ingredient. So now I have my EP price dropped in there. I'm going to enter my units of measure again. And then I could do the same for my recipe cost. I can grab a hold of this lower right corner of this top cell for the shallots, drag it down and you'll see that it has entered my cost for each of those ingredients. Now that we've calculated our recipe cost for the individual ingredients, we're going to total them up. So I'm going to click on that first cell, hold down the shift key, and then click on the total recipe cost cell, and go up to this symbol here, which is, um, it's going to sum up the total. And if I click on that, you'll see that it is now dropped in that total recipe cost, which is $10.59. Now that we've calculated our total recipe cost, we can now calculate our cost proportion. The formula is listed here. We're taking our total recipe cost and we're dividing it by the number of portions. So we're going to enter the formula here, equals, go down and click on that cell with the total recipe cost, enter backslash for division, click on your number of portions that you've yielded, and hit enter and you'll see now that our portion cost is 66 cents. The last thing we're going to do is calculate our menu price and to do that again the formula is here we're going to enter equals we're going to click on that per portion cost again we're using division so the backslash and we're going to click on that 30 percent yield and enter it and you'll see that our menu price based on that 30 percent food cost should be two dollars and 21 cents so now that you've calculated the food cost don't forget to save it i posted both the recipes on blackboard use your spreadsheet that you've begun with your butcher's yield keep everything on one sheet you're going to upload that spreadsheet, once you've calculated out your cost for the Bordelais sauce and for Beurre Blanc sauce, you will upload that to the Blackboard website. As always, if you have questions, you can email me or I can also meet you via Collaborate to do a tutorial with you too.